Okay, let me ask this question first then. At the end of meiosis one, what will our ploidy be? Will it be 2n or will it be n? So the, at the end of meiosis one, our ploidy will be n because at the end of meiosis one, we're going to split our homologous pairs into two different cells. And so we're going to have something, or so our meiosis one will end with us having N in each of those cells. So our cells become haploid by the end of meiosis one. Okay. So another term for meiosis one is called reduction division. So meiosis one is responsible for making our cells go from diploid to haploid. Okay, and we'll, we'll see this as we move on. Okay, so let's first look at the first part of meiosis one, which is gonna be prophase one, and then also prometaphase one. I'm sort of just linking them together in this picture. So as we can see our nuclear envelope, by the end of prometaphase one, our nuclear envelope is gonna be completely disintegrated. And you can also see that our chromosomes have begun to coil. And then we're gonna have our kinetic cores microtubules start to line up and start to attach. Okay. Okay. And so what I want to say uh, before we get started is that we're going to be in all of our examples, we're going to be doing two N equals six. So what does this mean? This means we have six chromosomes total one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And we're going to have uh, two sets of three. So if two, n equals six, we know n is going to equal three. So the process that occurs that increases our genetic variability and what occurs specifically in prophase one of meiosis one is going to be crossing over. In crossing over, we're going to be talking about homologous chromosomes. So let's circle, I'm going to circle this chromosome so that you guys can look at them, these two chromosomes. These two chromosomes are homologous, and the way I've represented them as being homologous is that they're both the smallest chromosomes, okay? So they're, they're the two small ones, so they're homologous, okay? So what's going to happen is you're going to have your two chromosomes line up over each other. It's called a synapsis, okay? It forms a synapsis. And that's specifically talking about when the two homologous chromosomes line up over each other during prophase one. Now, what can happen is during that lineup, the chromosomes form a chiasmata. And so what a chiasmata is, is going to basically be a linkage. They're going to link at a certain point. So in my drawing, they're going to be linking right here. Okay. And so that specific point where the two homologous chromosomes are going to link is going to be called our chiasmata. And what will happen is that they're going to exchange information. And so our chromosomes now will be, you'll see that they've exchanged information and I'm denoting this by the change in color. And they can still be connected to each other. In my picture, I didn't draw them connected, but if they are connected to each other, which they will be, um, I'll just draw it actually. Okay. Right here, I'll extend it. When they're connected to each other and they're still held together by the chiasmata, this structure here, consisting of these four sister chromatids, this structure here will be referred to as a tetrad. Okay, so the synapsis is when they're going to line up. Okay, and this is only occurring in prophase one. Okay, and they're going to line up over each other, homologous chromosomes. Okay, they're going to link at the chiasmata, they're going to exchange genetic information, and then when they're linked together still, that formation is called a tetrad. Okay, and how does crossing over increase genetic variability? The blue chromosome over here, say this is from the father, say this is the dad, and the red one is from the mom. While they're coding for the same information, say eye color or hair color, they may have different alleles. So during crossing over, they're going to actually exchange alleles. And now they're, while they may be homologous chromosomes still, 
the individual chromosome, let's look at this one zoomed up. I'm going to zoom this up and I'm going to draw it to the right of our screen. While it's, they're still homologous chromosomes to each other, what's going on is that the sister chromatids of this chromosome are no more identical. So not identical. Because of crossing over, the alleles have exchanged. And so our sister chromatids are no more identical because there's different alleles. And so that's how crossing over is going to increase our genetic variability because we're going to be mixing up the alleles, essentially. Let's move on to metaphase one. What will line up at the center? The homologous pairs will line up at the center. Okay, so this will be our first homologous pair. Okay. And then I said in the previous picture, let me look at what were the other homologous pairs. So yellow and blue, and then green and orange. Okay. So we're going to have green and orange. These are like intermediate sized. Draw like that. This, this is another homologous pair. And then really large is our final homologous pair. So they're going to attach to the centrum here. All right. So what is the ploidy of our cell right now? We said in our previous cell, we said 2n is equal to 6. Has our ploidy changed, or is it still 2n equals 6? It's going to be diploid. Our cell is still going to be diploid. Why is it diploid? Well, how many chromosomes do we count? We count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We counted 6 chromosomes, and we're still in one cell. Okay, so we're still diploid, because we said 2n equals 6. If it was haploid, n is going to equal three. And so if you're haploid, if I'm saying we're haploid, that means our one cell has three chromosomes. But right now, our one cell has six chromosomes. So we know it's still going to be diploid. The key thing to understand in metaphase one, okay, is that homologous pairs are going to line up, okay? In metaphase of mitosis, all the chromosomes are going to line up in the middle. All right, and that's the key difference. So in anaphase one, what is going to separate from each other? Will sister chromatids separate from each other, or will homologous chrom uh, chromosomes separate from each other? the homologous chromosomes are going to separate from each other. Okay, that is the purpose of my this one. That's the purpose of lining up those homologous pairs next to each other. So they're going to be pulled apart, okay? Remember, our motor proteins are responsible for pulling apart these chromosomes, okay? And they're going to be connected at the centromeres. What is the ploidy of the cell? What is the ploidy? And when I'm talking about the ploidy, I'm saying how many chromosomes do we see and how many cells do we see? Our ploidy will be 2n. Okay, so it's still going to be diploid. Again, how did we figure that out? Well, we said 2n equals 6. So if one cell has 6 chromosomes, we know it's diploid. Well, we're looking at one cell. We count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 chromosomes. Even though they're pulled apart, they're still in the same cell. So we know it's still diploid. So let's move on to telophase. Nuclear envelope is going to start forming again. 
All right, and we're gonna draw here. Okay, and we're gonna say in this cell, we're gonna have our blue one. I think we have our green one, we have our yellow. What is the pleiotic? Two n, very good. Again, it is two n because we still are one cell and we still have six chromosomes in this one cell. Okay, but what occurs over here? Cytokinesis. All right, and because of cytokinesis, we now have two cells. So what are the poiety of these cells? N, very good. So now we know that the poiety of these cells are gonna be N and not two N because we have three chromosomes in each cell. So if each cell has three chromosomes, this is gonna be a haploid. So again, this is why meiosis one is considered the reduction division because re meiosis one is responsible to bring our cell to a haploid by cytokinesis, by the end of its cytokinesis. So here we have prophase two and we're gonna have prometaphase two. So prometaphase two, we're gonna have our nuclear envelope breakdown we can see that the spindle fibers are going to start forming and they're going to start connecting to each other. What is the ploidy of each of these cells? N equals three, N equals three. Very good. Both of these cells are haploid and they're entering meiosis too. All right. And then just quickly draw this. Drawings may take a bit now, but these microtubules are going to start to attach to the chromosomes, okay? So metaphase two, what is going on in metaphase two? What will separate in metaphase two and what lines up in uh, metaphase two? Chromosomes are aligned on the metaphase plate and sister chromatids will separate. So this is the key difference between metaphase one and metaphase two. Our sister chromatids are now gonna separate from each other, not our homologous pairs, our sister chromatids will separate. And again, what is the ploidy of each of these cells? Very good, N. N equals three, N equals three. They're still haploid. Okay, so metaphase two, it's gonna be haploid still. Let's move on to anaphase two. So anaphase two, it's gonna be very straightforward. The sister chromatid is gonna separate. I'll draw that quickly for you guys, then we'll move on. So a key thing to understand is what is the ploidy during anaphase two? What is the ploidy during anaphase two? The ploidy is going to be 2n, 2n, because again, we said 2n equals 6. So if you have six chromosomes in one cell, it is diploid. All right, so we can count how many chromosomes do we have in this cell. Now that they're pulled apart, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the same thing for the other cell. So you can see because of anaphase pulling apart those chromosomes, we went from N back to 2N, okay? So during anaphase two, you are a diploid.
And so likewise, in telophase two, we're gonna have our nuclear envelope start full, uh, forming again. What is the poiety of our cells in telophase, specifically telophase, not after cytokinesis? 2N, very good. The exact same reasoning as last time, okay? And let me draw this, okay? So both of these are gonna be 2N. Why? Because there's still six chromosomes in one cell, okay? But after what occurs here, cytokinesis, we're gonna have two cells formed by that one cell. So we're gonna end up with four total cells, right? Four gametes. Each gamete is gonna have what ploidy? I shouldn't have drawn that dashed line. It should be a solid line. We're going to say the nucleus completely reforms. What is the ploidy in each one? Very good. The ploidy in each of our cells is going to go back to being N. Let me just quickly finish drawing this for you guys. Very good. So the ploidy here is going to be 2N. After cytokinesis, our ploidy is going to be N. So all of these are going to be haploid. So a haploid. So we can see that we start off with N at the beginning of meiosis 2. In the middle, during anaphase 2 and telophase 2, we went back to 2N. But at the very end, OK? Our ploidy is N, it's haploid because we have cytokinesis and there is gonna be three chromosomes in each cell. Because we said, if 2N equals six, if you have six chromosomes in one cell, you're diploid. If N equals three, if you have three chromosomes in one cell, you're haploid. 